Hi there, YouTube this Clormo with another video of my Logic Pro X tutorial series season 2 and today we're back into one of the other synths and the synths mini series that I want to keep on going I'm going to be talking today about the EFM1 so we're going to be talking about FM synthesis which the EFM1 does which is an FM synthesizer since we have seen a lot of the same concepts throughout in this overview type of videos for the synths before I go into detailed videos on each of them I want to focus more on what's different on the EFM and that way try to make it a shorter video but I can't promise anything so before I go into the video I uh, just wanted to remind everybody that this video oh, um, it's part of the new round of the Amazon gift card giveaway so all you need to do is be a subscriber and leave a comment on this or the previous video to be eligible so let's step right in so here I have the EFM one on track number one I have the previous ones that I've covered in different tracks like I have said in the uh, different videos before this one if you are looking at this video before the others I suggest that you go back and check the other ones first because I'm gonna skip a few things, right? Because it's, I want to keep it an overview video. EFM1. So, like I said, it's an FM synthesizer. So what we do with FM synthesis is that we are creating new harmonics by modulating the frequency of one oscillator with another oscillator that's running at a higher rate. And that might be a little bit confusing look at my previous videos so you get a better grasp of this concept okay I, I, I understand it might be confusing if you're looking at this for the very first time but anyway the FM1 so it looks a lot like uh, one of the other synths that we have done bef uh, seen before but instead of a filter we're using this guy here which is the FM amount and that's one of the key differences um, from this to the previous synths that we have seen from Logic um, none of the stuff that's around the FM amount it's different to his um, synth counterpart right like a lot of the stuff that's here um, it's similar to what we have seen before uh, and I'm gonna go into a little bit more detail in a few seconds the differences are some of the differences are and the ones I want to cover is the, the carrier oscillator which is what we're listening to and then your modulator oscillator which is gonna modulate the frequency of the carrier so these two uh, are my modulation sources right my modulators I should say and they pretty much work together they are related and these different parameters both have a harmonic and fine knobs and the harmonic knobs establish what ratio these two guys are going to be working together so right now the default settings i have a one to nothing so I'm, this the, the modulator is doing most of the of the work if i go one to one i will get more of a sawtooth type of uh, of wave if i make it two to one i get more of a square wave and so on and so forth the different ratios that you can set is is gonna determine what kind of uh, wave sound or, or, or oscillator wave you're gonna be getting so and for that I'm using in the end I'm gonna hit play and, and move this around a little bit I'm still using that same uh, MIDI pattern that I had from before but moving on the modulator also introduces space when it's not in sync you know it's a, it's a, it's a ratio so uh, this here I can control it but it's a ratio it's not gonna be in sync with my uh, with my tempo and what else the FM amount right as I was saying earlier it has a similar effect to the cutoff but it has different technology behind it so it doesn't it doesn't do the same thing but it works in a similar manner so think about the FM amount as your as your cutoff this is all from before so I, I'm not gonna uh, talk about it a lot it's just a modulation envelope with your ADSR uh, parameters we have seen that before what I will mention though which is different 
or new here is your modulator pitch and you also have your FM depth so your modulator pitch it's part of your modulation envelope and um, it can affect the, the the modulation you know the modulator pitch is going to affect your modulation by uh, sending a pitch signal to it so it works like those pitch buttons that we had in our uh, other sense right so that's it's just a different way of looking at it but similar in the same way right the FM depth though uh, will give you some will give something similar to like a filter envelope adding a bright punch type of effect to the front of the sound so still something new but relatable to our previews so as i as i'm going through the different things you see that i keep calling it by the name and then telling you it relates or it's similar to so that's why i'm concentrating more on the different things because even though they're different or new um, they have a relation or work in the same way as a, as a, uh, their synth counterpart. But that's good because that's going to put you in a position to know how to work around these different settings to uh, create some different sounds, right? So moving on from, from all of these guys and keeping in my modulation type of area here, right? That mushroom uh, shape. Um, accession of the synth we have our LFO and our rate so our LFO if we um, move that knob uh, clockwise we are getting or to the right uh, we're getting um, my modulation of the FM intensity right it's gonna be working directly with our FM amount if I go to the left though I'm gonna be introducing a vibrato but while if I do it to the right, I'm gonna uh, affect the intensity of my FM, and then uh, the well, actually, the intensity would be determined by the rate, which is down here, and it's now it's also not in sync with my tempo. It's just uh, I can give it more intensity or less intensity, uh, depending if I moved from left to right. Then if we go to my left, these are like our output settings, left and right, this this will be my output settings on the instrument, on the synth. So I have, on my left, I have my sub oscillator level effect. So it's gonna, this does is pretty much, it's gonna be a sine wave that's introduced after I have modulated uh, up here, I have modulated my resulting um, waveform or FM wave and here I will just introduce uh, another sine wave a level below so that's similar to what we have done in in other sense but uh, it's just one knob that we can control and intensity from we don't have a set of different via controls left and or targets like in the ES1 for example or ES2 and then my stereo detune down here will in essence introduce a chorus effect and will pan the sound a little bit and then to the right is just the same as we've seen before just uh, our volume envelope with ADSR right which is if you have learned from the previous videos this is controlling in layman's terms how much time um, uh, an effect will come in after I press the mini note so that this here uh, applies that concept to the output volume so and then we have our velocity knob here which again also relates to the mini note depending on the velocity of that mini note is the amount of effect that I'm giving it if I want to give it the full effect I go all the way to the right if I want to give no it no um, effect whatsoever I go to the right so the velocity would not come into play into my volume and then my main level is just the main volume of the whole uh, synth so that's in essence what the EFM1 can uh, it's it's composed of what the synth uh, parameters are 
obviously none of that will make sense unless you are trying to create some sounds with it so i'm just gonna hit play move some of this stuff around and again because it's just an overview video trying to show you what different controls it has in relation to the previous sense i'm just gonna keep it there move some of the stuff a little bit he, hear what uh, or listen to the, the fact that he has on my midi notes and then close the video so let's hit, let's hit play this is with my default settings now I'm gonna I don't know if it's noticeable to you that it's a sawtooth type of sound I'm gonna make it 2 to 1 more of a square sound So that's more like a bell sound. I'm gonna make it less, it's just a little bit annoying. Give it, make it a little bit more bassy. One thing I forgot to mention though, was this fixed. Uh, button on the on the carrier. What that does is just dis disconnects. I'm gonna hit pause for a second. It just dis disconnects your um, your tuner. You know the this this two uh, parameters of the carrier are disconnected from your from your keyboard, which is what it's gonna do. Right? If it's fixed, I can only control it with with what I have here if I if it's not fixed then my pitch band and my velocity and whatever else I can introduce as a modulation source from the keyboard would affect this signal but since it's fixed I'm just dealing with the synth itself so let's just work with the FM, FM amount. Does that vibrato making it more annoying? This definitely did pan the sound a little bit, like I said before. Most, I hope it's noticeable on your end. On the velocity to affect this. I also neglected to mention that these are my, my global parameters, but this is this is we have seen this before, so that's that's why I didn't mention it. Oh my god, this was clipping like crazy, right? Well that's because I this mean I didn't pay attention, so sorry if I destroyed your ears with that. Um so yeah, this is what the EFM does in a nutshell, obviously, uh, if I do a, a more detailed video of this guy later, then um, we can design some specific sounds so that you can get even an even better understanding. But I think that with seeing the other synths that I have discussed before and then coming to this one, you really wouldn't uh, be getting uh, a lot of new concepts out of it other than it's uh, FM synthesis instead of uh, sub synthesis which gives you a different range of sounds and tonalities and pitches that you can achieve that's in a nutshell more or less what you can get from it so before I close I'm pretty much done with this I just wanted to say that the plan going forward will be I I have given an overview on the EFM-1 then I want to give an overview on the ESE which is the en Ensemble Synth then go with the EBOC 20PS, the vocoder 
and then with sculpture and then go into alchemy which is the granddaddy of them all at this point uh, as far as logic pros uh since it's concerned so that will be kind of a, the schedule that i will going forward with i'm only saying that just in case that if there's a specific one that you want to that you're waiting for then you know that that's how i'm going to be releasing them then with the more in-depth um tutorials what i want to concentrate is just on a few of them not on all of them because you will see that after i talk about alchemy <sighs> you're gonna say like why did you <laughs> wanted me to see all these other guys well it's because the other sets uh give you similar results faster for some things like for again like for bases i would use an esm or a es2 i would get a, a pretty good result without having to deal with all the parameters that alchemy has so that's the reason why but um in that videos i'm probably just going to concentrate on alchemy es2 and the sculpture uh, that's probably what i want to concentrate or focus on for more in-depth videos because it's a lot of material but in the end if i feel like i have more time or if people ask me some questions about the other ones then i may do videos on those as well but for now this is the plan going forward so i'll leave you with that you you if you are looking at my videos for the first time this is the first video that you see from my channel and my tutorial series make sure that you follow me on social media as you can see in the graphic below if you have any questions leave me a comment here or send it through any of the other outlets that you see before you thanks again to everybody that's uh, supporting me so far as usual and giving their feedback and doing a lot of different things to help me spread the word on what the, the work that I'm doing, not only with the Logic Pro X knowledge sharing, but also with my writing and uh, music producing. So thanks from the bottom of my heart. <laughs> no, sincerely, thanks a lot. And with that, I'll leave you for this video. See you in the next one. Peace out, YouTube.